we are used to separation of religion and state. That opens a space where religious leaders freely can speak their mind. For mainline Muslim establishment in Palestine, tradition and context are not the same. They are more closely linked to the political establishment, while the Jewish side again is different. The Bible tells us about kings, who, uh, the pr uh, priests who were close to the kings, and prophets who could speak their mind more freely and critically. But after the, Ro the Roman occupation of the Middle East, it's only since 1948 that Judaism has related to a state which is also based on Judaism. And the chief rabbinate is part of the Israeli government. Currently, however, there are huge differences between the rabbis. Some speak their mind critically of the government, others are linked to the government and hesitate to speak critically. Religious leaders have important roles in the, la in the Holy Land, in guiding their flocks and in, in interpreting the scriptures. They can intensify or, or escalate the conflict by stressing certain religious elements. Examples are of a chief rabbi who asks why Muslims need Jerusalem as a holy city when they already have Mecca and Medina or a Supreme Judge of the Sharia Courts, who says that Jews have no cultural or historical connection to Jerusalem. Religious leaders can deepen a conflict by delegitimizing the religious attachment of others, instead of, for example, seeking a common mission for a city which all regard as holy. Through dialogue, they can seek a common vision and a common ground because dialogue makes religion visible as a community of believers, persons and people created by God. Dialogue establishes the theological foundation of the common humanity. That is a foundation which is beyond human tensions because it's created by God. 